Hello everyone, this is Tony Sager of Project Nightmare, and this is the top 10 most haunted places in San Francisco, California. San Francisco has a colorful present, but a dark and stormy past. There are hundreds of stories that range from mysterious disappearances to untimely deaths. This is why many people are curious about the most haunted places in San Francisco. Number 1. Alcatraz Let's start with the most popular place of all. Even though I've visited Alcatraz many many times, I still get a slight chill every time I step into the main prison house. I feel it more at night, when there are fewer people around, the wind is whistling through its cracked windows, and the reality of what went on there sinks in. Alcatraz was built as a military prison, and later converted to a federal prison. It's seen hundreds of prisoners over the years. Many have been killed here during prison fights and prisoner takeovers. There is no doubt that this place could have been many spooks hanging around. People have reported voices, footsteps, and the sound of cell doors opening and closing. When they turn around to investigate, no one is there. Visitors have reported feeling cold spots throughout the building, mainly in the dining hall. Number 2. Stowe Lake Another one of the most talked about places in San Francisco is Stowe Lake. This man-made lake sits on the eastern side of Golden Gate Park. It's a popular place for people to hang out and relax, hike to the top of Strawberry Hill, and ride the boats around the lake. However, many visitors report seeing an unusual woman during their visits in the evening and after dark. She is always described as glowing with long hair and a white dress. Although the image that people see is the same, the real story of Stowe Lake is unknown. There are two versions of the story that lead into why she roams the area. Some believe that this woman from the 1920s or 30s became pregnant. To hide her pregnancy, she disposed of the baby and then killed herself here. It's said that she roams the area looking for her baby. Others have said that a mother walking the park lost control of her stroller, and with her baby inside, it rolled into the water. She then entered the lake to desperately save her child. Neither was seen again. Both stories sense chills down my back. Number 3. Golden Gate Park Another often cited unworldly figure in Golden Gate Park is a police officer. This police officer pulls over unsuspecting traffic violators in the park. When people go to pay their fine, they find that the officer listed on the ticket has been dead for years. It's a strange experience for both the person receiving the ticket and the local police station. If an officer is following you around in the park, simply head outside of the park. If it's this ghostly officer, he will disappear the minute you leave. If not, then well, I guess you have a real ticket coming your way. Number 4. Neptune Society Columbarium The Columbarium is a place where people lay the ashes of their loved ones to rest. It's on the western side of San Francisco, in the Richmond District. Many people visit every day, and some have reported seeing ghostly sightings inside. A caretaker speaks of the hauntings of a little girl whose ashes were behind glass in one of the area of the building. People have reported feeling a hand touch them. When they turn around, no one is there. The occurrences are most common in the area where this little girl's urn sits. The columbarium is open to the public. It's also the resting place for many of San Francisco's founding families, as well as important people of the city over time. Number 5. San Francisco Art Institute the San Francisco Art Institute is a gorgeous building near both North Beach and Russian Hill. It was built in 1900, and it is said that the building was built on the site of an old graveyard. The tower of the building is said to be very haunted. Students and visitors have reported many strange and spooky encounters. They hear screams or footsteps when no one else is around. They also see ghostly images at times. During the renovation of the tower, workers reported several encounters with what seemed like frustrated ghosts. 
Number 6. Ocean Beach Sutro Bath The Sutro Baths were completed in 1896. It was a large swimming pool complex open to the public. At the time, this area was far away from San Francisco, so it attracted mainly the wealthy and those visiting for the weekend holidays. The baths burned down in the 1960s. Due to the severe damage, it was closed for good. The ruins still stand, and everyone is welcome to stop by for a visit. However, the tunnel of the Sutro Baths is said to be haunted. It's said that many sacrifices have taken place here. If you visit at night and light a candle, a ghostly image will take it away and throw it in the water. This often happens around nightfall. Number 7. Curran Theater The Curran Theater hosts some of San Francisco's top theater performances all year long. Hundreds of people walk through its doors each week and many have reported seeing the ghost of a ticket taker in the lobby of the theater. In 1933, a ticket taker was shot and killed here during a robbery. Many suspect the figure seen by the theater attendees in the mirror is the ghost of this ticket taker. Some also say the spirit of a little girl killed across the street also haunts this theater. Number 8. Queen Anne Hotel If you enjoy being spooked during your stay, then check out the Queen Anne Hotel near both Japantown and Pacific Heights districts. This historic Victorian was built in the 1890s. It was originally a school for young girls. Its passionate teacher, Miss Mary Lake, lived in room 410. When the school was shut down, she was devastated. She moved out, carried on with her life, and died several years later. The building changed hand many times and turned into the Queen Anne Hotel in 1980. Many visitors have reported seeing Miss Mary Lake roaming the hallways and hanging out in her old room. It's said that she still can't get over the closing of the school and is not happy about the building being occupied by anyone else. Number 9. City Hall San Francisco City Hall in the Civic Center District has quite a history. This building was opened in 1915, just less than a decade after the last City Hall building was destroyed by the 1906 earthquake and fire. This building is home to the office of the Mayor of San Francisco, as well as all the city supervisors. The darkest and most tragic event took place here on the second floor in 1978. The story of this dark night began months before the incident, when tension arose between Dan White, a conservative supervisor, and Harvey Milk, the first gay supervisor to sit on San Francisco City Council. After quite a bit of conflict, White resigned from his post. A few days later, he returned, asking Mayor Moscone to reinstate him. After the discussion, Moscone refused to reinstate White. A few days later, White returned to City Hall on a mission of vengeance. He crawled through the first story window with a 38 revolver in hand. He went directly to Moscone's office to plead one more time for his seat. When Moscone refused a final time, White shot and killed him. He then walked down the hall to Harvey Milk's office where he shot and killed him, too. Many of the late night security guards now report unusual noises and other behavior when a few people are around. No one knows if it's the ghost of these or other notorious politicians that once frequented the city hall. Number 10. Presidio. The Presidio is another hot spot of ghostly activity. This old army post is home to dozens of old officers' quarters, the National Cemetery, and other historic buildings. One of the most haunted places here was the Old Army Hospital. However, it was torn down and is now the location of the Letterman Digital Arts Center. While a few new reports have surfaced about this building, a handful of employees have mentioned cold spots throughout the building. For several years, visitors and employees have reported ghostly figures in the Presidio. National Park Service Visitor Center Many have reported seeing army men knocking on doors of empty rooms. Others have reported seeing guards still on duty. The Presidio is also home to an old Indian burial ground. 
Others have mentioned strange experience in and around the Presidio's pet cemetery. This has been the top 10 most haunted places in San Francisco. Thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and leave a comment down below on what you think. This is Tony Sager of Project Nightmare, signing out.